hidden on the wild coast of South Africa, where the Indian Ocean joins the Atlantic, there is a cave. Today it's abandoned, but once it teemed with life. For here, tens of thousands of years ago, some of our earliest ancestors lived. I like to think of areas along this coast as being the original gardens of Eden. You really had everything that you needed. For the last 10 years, this cave has been anthropologist Chris Henschelwood's life. Every year, he's dug further and further down, back into time, searching for clues about the people who lived here. And one day, he came across something he never expected to see. Something that, according to all the textbooks, just shouldn't have been there at all. This absolutely incredible image appeared. There was enormous excitement, you can imagine. Everybody was jumping around the place. Here was a definitive image that nobody would argue with, was deliberately created. Henschelwood's discovery is threatening to revolutionize our understanding of one of humanity's biggest puzzles. History books may have to be rewritten and long-held theories torn up. Because of what he found, one of the great scientific detective stories may finally have been solved. When did our ancestors cease being brute animals and first become truly human? When did we learn to think? Well, I suppose if I had to isolate one trait that I would say marks modern humans, it's innovativeness, creativity, the ability to introduce and invent new things all the time. No other animal species is continually reinventing its own behavior. But when did this crucial ability to be creative and to dominate the world around us actually happen? Find the day we learn to think, and you would have identified perhaps the single most important moment in human history. We essentially live in a world that we create in our heads. If you look around us, everything that you live in is created by humans. This is a, f a fascinating development. How did we come to behave the way we did? When did this happen? The search for the answer to that question has become one of science's greatest missions. But it was not going to be simple. Thinking leaves no traces. There are no fossilized thoughts waiting to be dug out of the ground and dated. It was like investigating a murder scene without a body. So scientists had to look for indirect clues. Not fossils, but other evidence for when thought began. And then they realized the thought must have come hand in hand with something else. Come on, full pan and pan banana. Yes, I tried to speak to her yesterday. Yes, did you not know? No, that? I didn't know. Yeah. Thinking also means talking. Give me a few. Um... For us to be able to transform the world, our thoughts need communication. Hi, thanks very much. Thank you. So scientists concluded thinking could only have happened when we developed language. It's utterly vacuous. You make a simple mistake. From there, it doesn't, it doesn't bother. Read. My lips. Language is really a critical threshold to cross. The ability to have things stand for other things and to recognize and to agree within a culture or, or even within a species that a certain thing stands for something, uh, something else. But then archaeologists ran into the same problem all over again. There are no ancient tape recordings 
and writing was only invented recently. What are we going to look for? First of all, it's going to give us evidence that humans were behaving in a modern way. We're very stumped for how we're going to get evidence of these kinds of things. So we look, in a way, for proxies. But there was one kind of evidence archaeologists could look for, something that was proof of thought and as clear a form of language as you could ever hope to see. How do we detect creativity in the, in the archaeological record? One obvious line of evidence is art. When you get unquestionable art, it's widespread and common. I think you can say that you're dealing with people just like us. Only humans create and can make sense of art. I'm sure that dozens of dogs have walked down this street in the past years. And perhaps not a one has glanced up in awe or wonder and thought to himself, what does this mean? For a dog, this is color on a wall. Perhaps even less than that. But to a human being, a painting is far more than just a collection of colors. It is a language, an expression of thought. In a lot of ways, this becomes a way of talking. This is a story. In fact, many, many stories. The listener, the reader, the onlooker has to decode the story. So when you look at this mural and see all of these different images, you don't look at these for the pictures, you don't look at these for the color, you don't look at these for what they do to the building. You look through them to meaning. For archaeologists, this realization that art, language, and thought were all the same thing was a huge breakthrough. Suddenly, what they had to look for was clear. Discover the earliest forms of human art, and you would have found the day we learned to think. So, starting decades ago, archaeologists went hunting for art. They looked in the obvious place, Africa, the cradle of human evolution itself. But they found nothing. They traced the path the early humans took out of Africa through the Middle East. Still, nothing. So, archaeologists turned to Europe, and then, a wonder. The first ever cave paintings. Stunningly crafted and detailed. This is their representation of the world around them. So when I walk into one of these caves, it just absolutely gives me chills to think that in some minuscule percentage, I'm able to actually peek into the way that they saw their world. We can walk into a cave like that and say, I understand. I understand the mystery. A modern human would have done that. I would have done that. And they found far more. 